and that is the, a very dangerous force in the mid lane. But oh, you, yeah. you have a look at the other bands. We've got the Ryze and the Hecarim taking it away from both top laners, respectively. Ryze and Hecarim both super strong in the meta right now. And you have to admit, we just did a Rumble graphic. I wouldn't, I'd be surprised if someone didn't pick Rumble in this game, given the other two bands already. Yeah, that's true. And there's only one band left. There's a whole lot of names on that on the list of yeah. priority picks that are still remaining there. Callista stands out like yeah. a sore thumb. The likes of Rek'Sai's there as well, I guess. But Echo's available, of course. Spook's more than happy to pick that one up. We know that Sw uh, Swift Fizz. has been playing a little bit of that in solo queue as well. Fizz is a massive choice. Echo is the one that's going to hit the bench, but... I don't know what the Chiefs are going to choose out of the bevy of huge options here. So many options available for them. The Rek'Sai may be the option for the first pick, but we've seen how good Swiffer is on that Nunu. So Radiant getting Callista would be a big surprise, yeah. to say the least. They're hovering it at the moment. And again, the rest of the options still abundantly available. Even the Alistar and support lane for Ejim right there. Yeah, well, of course, Destiny has had some success for the Al with the Alistair as well. It is going to be the Callista lock-in. The Chiefs couldn't go past that massive yeah. power pick there in the bottom lane. But AV, now with some choices to make, do they take away the Thresh, make, so make sure that they're not going to have that huge Thresh Callista yeah. lane? Or do you do they just realize that Egypt then picks Alistair, and that is equally as devastating? Yeah, you're most likely going to see the Alistair picked here. But the question is, is the Rek'Sai going to be picked because Gragas is banned? Or are they going to go for a stronger, like a Fizz top lane as an example? Yeah. Or do they even want the Rumble in the top lane? Well, so many options still available for this Avant lineup, but we'll see what they actually want to lock in. Yeah, it looks at the moment like it is the Rek'Sai and of course the Alistair there in consideration here for Avant. We'll see whether that is what's going to make it through. Of course, still another 17 seconds to go, but these picks make a whole lot of sense to me. Of course, Chelby wants to be moving around that map, get in and amongst the action as soon as possible. We know Chelby is an aggressive player, has sort of tapered that just a little bit, but I still like seeing him with early power in his hands. Definitely. He just seems to be a little bit more matured about his aggression. Yeah. He times it a lot better to when he needs to be. He's not just all out aggressive, as we are seeing that lock-in. They've taken the Alistar away from any Callista alistar combos and still very good on Destiny right now. The Rek'Sai, as you said, the early pressure going to be evident from Chelby. He's going to be able to do a lot of work for this advanced side that do not want to fall behind to the Chiefs anytime soon. Well, Swiffer making some considerations here, hovering a few interesting champions. We're not going to talk about them until they have been locked in. Swiffer likes to mess around just a little bit. But as far as this Avant lineup is concerned, they've already got the Bouncy Castle, or what is the beginnings of a massive Bouncy Castle? What is going to augment this comp, and what are the Chiefs looking at trying to get off the board with these next picks? Well, Avant have got their front line essentially secured now. They're looking for a carry role. They can go for anything they would like. LeBlanc in the mid lane. They could even go for the Victor, perhaps. We know that... Swiffer is a prominent Victor player and might be wanting to take that away from the Avant lineup here, but we'll see what they actually want to do with five other seconds remaining. Yeah, three seconds remaining and switches over to a Mordekaiser for a moment. Is going to be Morgana in the end. He's just playing with my heart no, a little Morgan bit, Kaiser, is Swiffer. Swiffer. What are you doing? Yeah, I could actually hear the laughter of Swiffer in the background. Knows that he's trolling me. It's very, very upsetting. But of course, I'm going to lock away the jungler and the support here for us. Yeah, so they pick up the Morgana and the Nunu. Again, no real stress here for Spooks wanting to get that Rek'Sai prioritized at all. The Callista definitely coming first in this particular in this particular case. And the Nunu, Spooks having the most ridiculous KDA to ever exist when it comes to that Nunu. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's actually died in any Nunu I games just yet. Once, so might maybe. be once. I'm not entirely sure. Still ridiculous, whatever the number is. It's not even worth pointing out. Morgana, though, the pick here. Most likely for Ejim in that bot lane. The support option with Callista is a very strong bot lane duo, though. Oh, most certainly is, especially as far as getting those picks are concerned. You yeah. land the Dark Binding, and there's so much follow-up damage in that lane. I want to talk about Avant, because they've taken their time thinking about their last couple of picks. Kensti was considering a Yasuo, maybe getting baited a little bit by what Swift was saying before, but that is a third knock-up that they've added to this team comp. Yeah, it looks a lot to me like they're going to be protect, protecting the Jinx. So yeah. the support, don't be surprised if it follows up with the Jana or something. Oh, they've already oh, they've got that Let's just throw that out the window. Uh, they're looking for the top laner, in fact. So maybe even the Rumble is going to be an option. So that is a two-threat comp. They have got that Jinx. They've got the Hyper Carry. They've now got the Lulu. Pseudo Carry, Magic Damage Style, mid laner. And then you've got the Rek'Sai and the Alistar, just an overbearing front line. So right now, their team comp is very strong and it kind of indicates to me without that last pick what they're looking for on the side of the chiefs here they've got the damage from the ad carry they could go whatever they like in the mid lane whether it's the victor perhaps they want to go back onto that one i've seen a lot of success from that oh yeah keeping in mind the top lane option still going to be fizz available the rumble 
definitely still available, but we'll see what Swiper wants to do. Yeah, Swiper, of course, has a lot of different yep. options here. Still loves the Renekton there in the top lane. Not sure whether he's going to opt for that one. But one thing I want to mention is the fact that Ivana played this very well. They can put Lulu in the top lane and still pick up something in that mid lane. Maybe even an AD Assassin there. Maybe the Yasuo could come through. That is triple knockups of AoE nature from this avant-garde side. But it is going to be the Rumble picked up and the Victor, like you mentioned there, for Swiffer. And Swiffer is... Definitely no slash when it comes to that Victor. No, he certainly knows what he's doing when it comes to Victor and putting down the hurt. He's oh, had yeah. some very successful games, usually on the back of having an Ecto Echo with him, though, and just having that Venn diagram comp between the duo of the yeah. jungle and the mid lane. Now it's a Nunu. Doesn't play as heavily into the favor of the Victor, but... It's just a bigger Venn diagram, isn't it? Because you've it got is. the it's absolute zero for a huge... Bigger. You want an Echo mid with the Nunu, so it's the biggest Venn diagram to ever exist. But oh my goodness. In saying that, it does still work quite well with the Nunu having the Victor there. You said it, it is still a bigger Venn diagram. It's zone control. Nunu yeah. forces you out of an area, and that forces you closer to the Victor, perhaps, and into his line of fire. Yeah, and also potentially into that uh, that gravity field as yep. well. They can really extend that out, make sure that they're closing off an area. It is going to be a Relia considered for Porky, though. So Kensti going to be taking the Lulu into the mid lane. More than happy to take sort of a little bit more of a neutral lane. A lot of lines going on. It's sort of the red laser beam against the pink laser beam as far as taking out way. those minions yeah. are concerned. And Porky heading back towards his Aurelia play. We have credited him for some fantastic plays before. They did win a game with Porky on Aurelia, but it was shaky. We do know he's very capable of playing that Aurelia, and it's also a very good pick into the Rumble matchup. Yeah. Entirely skill-based. If you can get that Equilibrium strike and stun someone, or Swiper in particular, sorry, when he's not facing you with the Flame Spitter, you actually can completely outplay that Rumble. And in saying that, you have enough stun duration to actually stun him and walk around. So, yeah. for the most part, tending to max that stun would be the Aurelia in that lane, unless you're going for the sustain, but also very risky because they nerfed that not too long ago. Yeah, that's true. So, not going to be locking him down for too long there, but we'll see whether, you know, just the raw power of, of Aurelia's kit. I mean, she's just a fantastic champion in her own right, yeah. able to get so much done with so little as well. So, once she gets that Trinity Force, we'll just be diving onto that back line, really trying to make things happen. But will you be able to lock down a Callista? That's the real question. It is so difficult to lock down a Callista. As Aurelia, you need to be straight on top of her. And Aurelia, a very sticky champion, notoriously yeah. sticky, having that Trinity Force completed, just aids for that so much. But in saying that, if Callista gets away, if the stun doesn't connect from the Aurelia E, then she's probably just going to casually hop on by. Yeah, well, that's that's a very good point there, Rusty. And we'll see what they are going to do. Of course, we are going to have a look at the lineups here. And what are both of these teams trying to do? Because it looks like a lot of zone control here from the Chiefs. But where are they really going to peak in their power? They're very good at neutral control. They've got the Rumble and the Nunu in particular, even yeah. the Victor to an extent. And Callista, when it comes to smiting, they're just going to be able to take every objective. If it's uncontested, even if it is contested and it comes down to a smite steal, you'll probably find More the Chiefs... More of a Ren steal, isn't it, really? Or a Ren steal, yeah. You'll probably find the Chiefs just... In, in their entirety, being able to take those objectives away. And you have a look at the side of Avant, less so objective control, more so looking to scale a work around that Aurelia and that Jinx. Yeah, that's very true. But ladies and gentlemen, we want to hear what you guys think. Whether you think that the Chiefs are going to be able to continue their unstoppable record here at 9-0, move towards that 10-0 mark, make sure you use that hashtag CHFWIN, or if you think that Finally, we're going to get an upset here in Avant, are going to be able to take this game, use that hashtag AVWIN. And look, I love both of these team comps personally just because I really like the build up the Jinx comp. She just does so much damage in the late game, but you just can't go past the Chiefs, especially not when Swiffer has the victor in his hands. It's so much power. Plus, Callista in the hands of Radia, who's on in form. Yeah. That's scary. You do not want Radia on Callista. I could never say that too many times right now. He is a phenomenal AD carry, has the most kills in the league by a ridiculous amount at this stage. Yeah. If you put him on a champion like Callista, most commonly banned away, in fact, then you're making a small mistake. We saw King do exceptionally well, didn't actually pull the win, down, win out in the end. But when you see Raider, it's a whole new ballpark. Yeah, well, this is the thing. And of course, now with Ejim as well, always able to land those skill shots. We haven't actually seen his Morgana for the last little while, yeah. but we know what Morgana's capable of. We've definitely, definitely. seen Teague on there making the plays, and we'll see whether Ejim's going to be roaming around the map and picking up kill after kill, just like e uh, just like our Teague has shown us is capable of the Morgana champion in the support role. Entirely capable of roaming around. We know Ejim loves his Alistar, so yeah. maybe even see both of these supports start roaming around early, but in saying that, that'll probably warrant a lane swap first and foremost, and 
Do we want one of those when they pick the Aurelia into the Rumble? Well, that's an interesting question. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. And as far as like moving into this game, put yourself in the shoes of either of these teams. Who's going to be wanting the lane swap and who's not? You have a look at the bot lane of the Chiefs and it is very strong level one. So going into that, you maybe want to swap out the Avant bot lane just to get through the levels. Utilize the fact that Jinx can hard push down a turret and maybe find yourself with an objective advantage. But in saying that, you pick the Aurelia into Rumble. You've got a slight advantage when it comes to jungling capabilities of the Aurelia against the Rumble. Yep. But you want the skill matchup. You want to be able to show that you are the better top laner in that skill matchup. Come out ahead and turn that into an advantage. Yeah, and we've been talking about this as well. We've been talking about the fact that, you know, Porky and Swiper, close in skill level. Porky really looking to prove himself with a victory here against the Chiefs, letting us know, letting the world know that he can really carry his team forward from that top lane position. Yeah, definitely. There's always the potential of him coming out ahead. It is a completely skill-based matchup, so we'll see what actually happens. Yeah, that's a very good point. But speaking of seeing what happens, let's go to our casters on the desk and get into this game. Thank you again, Atlas and Spawn. We are going to get into our last game of the evening, Spawn. I'm Spawn. He's Rusty. Oh, sorry. You are Spawn. I'm sorry, Rusty Spawn. <laughs> we look very similar. <laughs> yes, you do, actually. It's the glasses. It is. It is the glasses. Yep. Too much, yes. Anyway, so we are about to get to our last game of the evening. Chiefs versus the Martin. As much as I love the Chiefs, I like them on comfort picks. They're looking strong, looking very strong, in fact. Avant's draft is ridiculous. Yeah, Avant has really mind game the Chiefs there. They saw that they were hovering the Lulu. They take that away. They know that Swiper wants the rumble. Porky goes back to like, I throw back to when he was Kulo, is an unbelievable Aurelia player. By far one of his best champions. They've got the early aggression out of their jungle, you know. The Chiefs arguably tilted Avant for like a year. Kensty was never the same after that matchup, but right now they're looking for some revenge. They are indeed an Avant. They really haven't gotten to play the Chiefs that often, to be honest. When they won last year, it was against Legacy. We took out the Chiefs, of course. They've been the kryptonite. Avant winning here has meant so much for a team that's really on the up and up, but the Chiefs, they haven't lost yet. Yeah, exactly right. You can see Radiant on a comfort pick, Swiper on a comfort pick. You know... Nunu hasn't actually been killed yet as long as Spooks has been playing and it. They're pretty safe. Back to base there, because I think he realized he forgot a couple of things back in his car. Yeah. He actually doesn't have items. There we items, go. Items, trinkets, you know. Probably went to ward and was like, uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> we'll see if that affects the level one, but there he is. Back with the items. Doran Shield actually to start there for Swiper. Managed to find it tucked into his suit there somewhere. Yeah, he looks a little bit sheepish, doesn't he? You know, but when you have a drill for one hand and a flamethrower for the other, it's hard to exchange money sometimes. It is. Very, very much is. End up scaring the shopkeeper instead of getting your item. But does manage to sort it out. It's just a simple misunderstanding back there in the shop. And Avant, they spread out very defensively, though. No one really wants to get too aggressive at level one, it feels like. Yeah, and you know, a deep pink ward on the top side of the map, making sure the rumble isn't going to be ganked fallen. over that wall. That's more in case Chelby goes up to the top lane level two, goes over the wall with the tunnel, gets a nice pop-up and is able to help Porky out there. So like the defense that Spooks has afforded his top laner, as Swiffer has been very vocal about today on the desk, Chiefs have moved away from the camp mid to try and support the rest of the lane. They have. I mean, the bottom lines seem fairly self-sufficient, but certainly been some attention there, mainly just for pushing and certainly attention in the top side of the map. Good to note as well, there's actually a pink ward in the tripod just next to Swiper, courtesy of Spooks in his very easy jungle from Nunu. Yeah, so Nunu, he's just going to be up to fly through, doesn't really give that many cares towards it. Radiant and Egypt with the W coming through from Callista, going to be able to take out the Krogs nice and easily, but a quick push coming through from the bottom lane of Avant. Yeah, you can see Wobble's going to have to have a big game here on the Jinx. They've built this team around him in a lot of different ways, although Porky is a fine secondary carry. Level 2 is going to be important. Raider and Egypt love to all-in people. Yeah, they certainly do. You know, sometimes they even all-in when they don't have a level 2. You can see they're standing equal with their wave right now. That was a good attempt at a binding. Does not hit, though. Level 2 now in there as well. And Raider, he's going in. Level 1, just going to stack the spears in. Yeah, he just wants to get as much zoning pressure as possible. Wave's still pushing in his favor. So the longer he can hold Warble off, the better. Yeah, Egypt actually still level 1, so can't get you they can much go else right than now, a couple bindings. Yeah, they might. Oh. It's scary. Level 2 now for Egypt as well. Radiant trying to hold the wave in a good spot. Yeah, so they have got the freeze coming in there. You know, there was a window where they could go aggressive. Currently, Warble actually winning in CS. 
and a lot of neutrality across the rest of the map. Pretty quick junglers on both sides, so we'll have to see whether it's Spooks or Chelby that gets ahead early. Yeah, and I think we've seen a lot of new new Rek'Sai, especially today. It really is just about keeping tabs and controlling the Rek'Sai. Yeah, and you know, right now I actually prefer Rek'Sai in the very early game. Uh, Nunu's good if he can counter jungle, but can't really gank the same way a Rek'Sai can. But in saying that, this is Spooks' as Nunu win. Got it twice, it's been banned a lot. He's very good on the champion. I can't remember if he's died yet. He might have died once, no, but he does he not have enough. very many deaths on this champion. Yeah, he's got like a 32 KDA, I think it is. It's not bad. And yeah. he's going to look for Kenster here, maybe. No, Raptors instead. They look very similar at the other stages of the game. Shelby instead takes away the grunt for himself. And Spooks trying to get some counter jungling done, but really just being annoying more than anything else. Yeah, exactly right. Just wants to make sure that he's got tabs on Shelby. They know that he's not on the top side of the map right now. Some continued laning across the board. We said that they both want equal lane matchups. Avant, a very good technical team. They're mechanically really sound. So we'll see whether that is able to impact how they play oh, the game. Spooks wedding in the top lane. Knows the target he wants is Porky. But Porky sitting in a brush being very patient. Swiper trying to hold the wave here and bait Porky in for CS. But Spooks busy with the Krugs right now. Okay, just doing some more counter jungling. Chelby still on the bottom side of the map seeing if... Radia and Ejim will go aggressive. You know, if anything, this split has said the answer will be yes at some point. And now Porky, Porky actually could be the target. Spooks come in, the snowball lands in. He's going to start getting slapped. Good equilibrium strikes, but the damage is still there. Overheat is great stuff, but Porky saves his summoner spell. Yeah, saves his summoner spell, and it's because neither were used by Spooks or Swiper there. You would have thought at least Spooks would burn his. They will get the teleport out, but Porky should be able to get back up there in no time. It's interesting to see how that works out, but... I guess it's just going to be maybe a regain from Spooks. That is, that is odd. I think both top laners may be playing chicken with the flash there. Yeah, they certainly were. They didn't want to be the one to use it while the other was able to keep. And, you know, in the end, it means that Porky gets back to lane, picks up that huge CS wave, and is still in a pretty good spot. Yeah, Swiper going to walk back by the looks of things because the wave, like you said, left in a silly spot. Shelby coming into the mid lane, though. He's ganked a lot for Kenzie recently, but Swift has kept the wave nice and safe. Yeah, he certainly has great wave control coming through there. The big discrepancy on the map right now is Radio 10. And CS off after being shoved in early by Warble has just been able to equalize, I guess, all the pressure. And I think that's the big lane for me. Mid lane, probably a lot of farming. Top lane's a skill matchup between good players, so I don't see that one going too far in one direction. But Warble needs to have a massive game on Jinx, and Raid is such a formidable opponent. Yeah, exactly right. Raid is going to hit an earlier spike than what Jinx is, although Jinx, arguably with one items, is one of the better AD carries. We'll see whether. He's able to stay at range because right now, the reason I like Jinx against the Victor is you kind of outrange Victor. You're able to sit in rockets, get a lot of damage down. Spooks is mid. Oh, good good wrap around here. Kensti almost getting gravity field, will force the flash out. Shelby's but Shelby's here. coming in. They might go through. Umbaro onto Spooks. Picks is down. Spite's down as well. Looking for the Q. Finds it. Damage is great, but Swiffer forces them away. He's level six. Yeah, and in the end, only the summoner spells out of Kensti burnt for that one. Spooks keeps his, Swiffer keeps both. And, you know, some aggression coming early from both junglers, but not much really coming across. I'm very impressed by the new, new pressure that Spooks has been able to put up. Burning summoners with that champion is not easy. Yeah, it certainly isn't. The drive-by snowballs, we make fun of it a lot, especially when you leave at level one the way that Spooks does. So he's been able to get into the lane and impact early. Yeah. Done some good work there. Swiper level six. Porky, the same there, as we can see them working on those very early items. But nothing major completely getting Swiper holding his own in the lane. That's very good for this matchup. Yeah, it certainly is. You know, it is a on paper a counter pick right now for Porky. But the lane actually doesn't get good until you have either... Depends what first item you go for. If you go for a Phage, it gets good, especially if you max out the W. If you go Jean, you generally max out E, and it goes good from there. So you do need a combined item if you are Porky before it becomes a really good pick. Yeah, and it's also somewhat level dependent, much like Aurelia almost yeah. always is. So Porky going to need to sit, spend some time, but he's actually slightly ahead in CS, so he's pretty comfy. Yeah, and you know, it's going to get to a point where Swiper wants a team fight and Porky wants to split push, and from there, he's not going to be able to approach the wave whatsoever. So it should get better from Porky, but right now, Swiper doing his best to control. Looking good so far, certainly on the top side for the Chiefs. You can see the gold lead very slight, but about 500 gold up from the Chiefs just for some strong CS. And again, many in that bottom side and probably from the jungle there as well. He's just trying to collect some money with his coin, but honestly, looking down the items, just that early side zone for Spooks, the only real major one completed. Yeah, and Warble missed a couple of CS there. Pretty cool. Looking for a back, probably just has his pickaxe right now. Radio, on the other hand, he's collected. 
little bit more CS. Now about 20 in the lead. Yeah, and that's a good lead coming through. Warble actually waiting for the wave, maybe. Might be able to collect a couple more, but news on that side of the map. Shelby's on the red side. He does have his ultimate, but it's actually quite early. Shelby's done a good job farming up the jungle, but Spook's going to collapse the tunnel. Yeah, Shelby's got that big wave mid when he helped Kensti push in as well. So has been leeching a little of experience. Always useful to help your laner, loners out, you know. It's just he's just tapped. Exactly. Just... <laughs> Just make sure you tell them that you're helping them. Yeah, exactly They'll right. never suspect that you're actually taking them. You know, backping them, because that way you know you want them to recall. <laughs> Trust me, it's not safe. I need to... <laughs> yeah. I see you played jungle before. <laughs> Swipe on the top side. Still clearing out with a lot of farming actually across this map, but Porky starting to get the edge on the top side. We talked about Raider. He's the one with the edge on the bottom side, and even Swiffer has a decent lead in mid there as well. The game's probably going to Chiefs' expectations currently, but where's the first major point of contention in this game? Sport? You know, you would have said it was around the 11-minute mark with the first dragon. This is kind of an old-school game from two veteran teams coming through here, so I'm expecting Dragon to start up about 12 minutes. Everyone summon a spells to be ready and just the big 5v5 team fight over that objective. Is there maybe someone we should look to as far as composition goes? So who's going to win that big level 6 fight? Yeah, so definitely at this point, Chiefs just have all the zone control. They have the ability to use the absolute zero. Ejim is a great zoning tool with his body because of the ultimate that comes out of Morgana as well. As well as the equalizer. Like, honestly, all the tools appear to be with the Chiefs. But you can never underestimate the value of a Jinx if they're able to get a kill and get excited with the Whimsy on it and the Hell Picks dishing out all that AoE damage. Yeah. Warble has got the tools, even if he's behind in this game, honestly, to just use the Lulu in the mid lane to help him out more. Yeah, well, blue buffs are in the mid lane there. Shelby does get spotted by a Sentinel, so he'll back away, but can get back down if needed with his ulti. But there's been a really long game of no you go in the bottom side here because no one is backed yet. Doran's Blade's still just sitting in those inventories. Yeah, and you know, sustain on this losing side means that Warble, he can just stick around and Destiny will just roar him back to healthiness and honestly, just outright pushing potential right now from Radiant. It means that the Chiefs have got a good CS advantage, but they're staying relevant at least right now. Oh, Mark. there's a massively good G port there that's going to spot Shelby. Between the Chiefs know that they are fairly safe to take this Dragon Swiper, even coming down just in case, but that was very well played. Oh, Swiffer, forced to flash away. Kensi does have not have his, sorry. Going to run towards his team. Yeah, backs away in the end, gets both summoner spells actually out of Swiffer, so nothing expended by Kensi to get that done. No, and it's honestly just this Dragon and some CS here for the Chiefs is how they won this early game. He said an 11, 12 minute dragon. That's what happened, but that was just stolen out from under their noses. Yeah, there was actually a ward on them. Like, Avant were completely aware of what was going on. Just exactly what we said, pointed out the composition differences right now and no ability to fight. So they give it up instead, get double summoner spells mid. Now look to Chelby to see if he can make something happen. Well, smart stuff there from Avant. As a result, Spooks will take away the Gromp, but Chelby's kept up nicely in time. He's actually slightly ahead. So Destiny actually should have warded that. He's got a couple of wards on him right now. And when you drive by your own Gromp, especially against Nunu, it gives you a lot of... That, that's Nunu's camp to take because Nunu is the best single target clearer in the game. He's got the consume, he's got the smite. So generally, if you are playing against a Nunu and you're in the bottom lane, got a couple of extra wards, that is a really important ward to make sure you keep up just because that's where you generally get counter jungle from. Yeah, you can see Spook's probably taken it a couple of times here at this point. Again, keeping tabs on Shelby, who's had some ganks, but maybe not as many as he'd like. In fact, they're honestly just trading jungle, uh, farm from each other's jungle. Yeah, they certainly are. Swift is going to be caught here, though. Trauma Sense will spot him off. Kensti ready with all his summoners and the ulti. This is a good setup by Avant. That's beautiful setup coming through. They've got him. Yep, Swiffer doesn't have a flash. Gets knocked up for days there. The damage is enough, and first blood goes to Kensti. That was a beautiful gank by Shelby. You know, most junglers, as soon as they spotted him on the side with the Tremor Sense, would have gone for it. He knew Swiffer, greedy for farm, going to approach the wave. Get first blood over onto the Lulu. That lane completely even now. Yeah, we look back, back down to the bottom lane now. Shelby, never mind pushing in. Does take a couple turret hits here as Spooks is trying to clear the wave out, but it's a bit tricky against the Lulu. Yeah, it certainly is, and you know... Oh, they Wait, go aggressive. Call. Ulti's there for Destiny, Teleport's going down. Raid is quite tanky, he's going in a bit too aggressive. Porky's chasing down Egypt, but a great binding in a stop that. And Raidy, he wants to kill so bad, but Porky will get away. Yeah, and in the end, they trade a lot of health on the AD and the support for a lot of health on the top laner and support on side of Avant. But they're still looking for all five members here for AV. Yeah, Nunu collapsing as well. Kensi's come down, but he's got no ulti. 
Victor also considering coming in, but instead everyone just backs away slowly. Yeah, yeah. put your hands up. Okay, you win this yep. round. We don't want any trouble here, fellas. And you know, pickaxe as well as BF, so it means that right now, Orbel actually in a pretty good power spike oh, gets caught, though. It's a binding radius. Can't walk over the Trumpets, can now. Warble gets ignited. Soul Mark attacks good. Rainy goes in and gets the kill. That was gorgeous. Yeah, just really smart play coming out of Aegim. Warble face checked the brush. No summoner spells. Probably didn't need to. The lane was pushing up regardless. And fly for it. And Brady getting a kill on Callista. When he already has a CS lead, it's not where you want to be. Spook's going to get a steal on the red buff here as well. And Egypt, that's a few too many people. Finds Shelby. Black Shield's good for the pole prize, but knock up, not there. Now his health getting drained here. Shelby needs to come in. Kenzie's rotating in. Might even get the kill for himself. Brady can't help him. Egypt attacks the Krom. Yeah. And he is going to give a kill to Shelby. Egypt's like, at the least, I'm going to get some wards down. Doesn't even get that because oh. there was a pink ward there. Yep, Avant. Denying. Poor Jim. He tried so hard. He I like, the, like attacking the grub. Like, please help me. Yeah. <laughs> You're on my side. He is. Spooks have been taking him the whole time. He's tamed him at this point. The <laughs> grub belongs to Spooks. Yeah, apparently he didn't get the memo that Spooks and the Morgata are on the same team, though, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens as Porky pops his ulti action on the top side. Sheen and Fade looking good. So level 10 able to really give it to Swiper. Although, answering intelligently with a nice overhead, overheated flame spitter. Yeah, right now Porky's getting sick of Swiper holding the lane, so he's just trying to shove it out. Still has that 8 CS advantage. Moving towards the Trinity Force, which is where you expect the lane to really go in Porky's favor. But really nice job from Swiper on the Rumble, staying even in the lane. And that's with, I would say, minimal jungle pressure after Spooks' early little appearance in the top side, which in this matchup, given the caliber of these players, is impressive to me. Yeah, I definitely agree, especially when we compared the Rumble players. Porky plays it a lot, knows the champion inside out, and hasn't really been able to eke out much of an advantage. No, not yet at least. He may be waiting for that big Trinity Force. We can see those items are starting to come through for both sides. Morella no one comes completed in the mid lane. Bloodthirster up for Rady here as well. And those side stones getting good use by the junglers. In fact, both are supports and junglers for both teams do have those ready to go. So drag it up in a minute 25. That vision going to start to get plopped down. Yeah, it certainly is. You know, Bloodthirster finished up right now for Radia. First major item complete out of the AD. Swiper going to go He's deep. got his ulti. Porky can't leap. He might not even need it. Uses it just to make sure. But a 1v1 in a rumble lane. Yeah, and able to take the creep wave as well. Going to push in very heavily on the turret. Take it down. Swiper. What is this? Know. I, Intimidated? I don't think so. That's really impressive by Swiper. I was already impressed with how he's handling the lane. Gets a solo kill, takes the turret, and Porky goes back sheepishly dead to pick up his Trinity Force. He's not done either. Big sweeps, he's getting in there. He's going to take out another minion wave. Yeah, he's looking to shove that one right in, so there's no freeze possibility. Also deny as much CS as possible. Now he has a creep score lead. He's got the turret, and... Realistically responsible for a lot of his team's advantage. I feel like someone's been practicing Rumble somewhere, because Swiper, again, not a bad Rumble player, but not Porky level. And this, this is something else. Yeah, it certainly is. You know, I, I honestly thought that Rumble was one of Swiper's better champions towards the end of last season. They were playing it on a lot, Rumble, Jarv, and Twitch, if you remember going into finals. It was actually the comp. Wow. Good. Black Shield. Destiny goes in with a flash pole prize, pops his ulti. That was some sick reflexes by Egypt. Yeah, it certainly was, you know. Got it when he knew that Radiant was definitely the target that was going to be prioritized. Maybe should have swapped targets there, Destiny, but the aggressive play doesn't bear fruit in anything. It does not, and Radiant still stacking up. Still a big CS lead here, about 30 up here. And Chief's just going to sort through and slow to this dragon. Swiper does not have his teleport, but he's in the area, and then all Avant know that, you know what, we're not going to contest with this one either. Yeah, exactly right. They need to do a little bit of damage control. Swiper's got relatively big at this part of the game. Their bottom lane is starting to fall further behind, so instead they're going to see if they can get a kill. That pathing is so clever from Swiper, although we'll just spot Shelby in time. Can't see in the area, they're going to make it a problem. Wild Growth is pop. Swiper does flash over the wall, but Porky now can chase in. But he's too close to the turret. Very well played by Rumble. And in response, the bottom lane turret completely zoned off by the Chiefs. They knew everyone was on the top side of the map. Radiant pushes in with his 40 CS advantage. And they lose a second turret of the game. Yeah, two turrets to one now in favor of the Chiefs. Up two dragons and equal on kills with two apiece here. But that gold lead starting to stack up a bit more. Chiefs 2,000 gold ahead and looking in control of at least two of their lanes. Yeah, and you know, I just want to point out the Chiefs vision control. Bottom side of the map, they've got everything lit up like a Christmas tree. Whipper. 
Finds Kenzie, finds Destiny, also Spooks though in the area. Good for him, but Pulverize, but the Chaos Storm is down. Shelby's forced to ultimate in. Swiffer does have his flash, he's gonna have to use it if he wants to stay alive, but no one chasing him. Porky actually off to the side, finds Swiper. Ulti down isn't bad, but Swiper can't live through this. Porky finally gets a return, but the gravity feels great. Binding follows in, and Radia gets a kill. Yeah, in the end, bottom lane rotated too quickly. Now the rest of the team in trouble. Spooks here as well does have his ultimate black shields on. Ejim coming in, that's a miss binding, but Spooks gonna keep chasing. Pops his ulti, Destiny pops his response. Kenzie though found over the wall, forced to pop his ulti on himself. Gravity Field zones out too, and Radia gets another kill. Now Shelby gonna get chased down here. Radia diving in, they're gonna pull all the spears into the back. Good double pulverize there, but the Black Shields may be there in time. Destiny just lives, and Warble almost got a kill. Yeah, Warble is full health right now. Actually missed the ultimate from range. If he had his time again, might have elected to hang on to it. In the end, it was actually a two for two going across, and Avant doing their best to they're hanging on for dear life. Yeah, trading not bad when you're down in gold, but this early might be an issue, mainly because Radier is currently sitting on still 30 CS ahead of your AD carry, but 3-0 now. Yeah, exactly right. So Radier definitely in the commanding position. On the other side of the map, you see that Kensi has been the beneficiary from a lot of the early, I guess, fighting. He's gone 2-0 on one, picked up the Abyssal Scepter. Strange item to come through on Lulu, but you understand with the Rumble, the Nunu, as well as the Victor, I actually really like it. A little bit of an adaptation in there and will help out, I guess, to make sure he doesn't get destroyed straight away. Yeah, Abyssal Scepter to, to me just kind of feels like the Brawler AP item, which is weird. But that's sort of what it is. Yeah, it's like if you want to fight against other APs lots, it gives you really effective stats. Yeah, it's good stuff. And even as the Salt Cruise for extra magic penetration. So, going to be doing surprising amounts of mid-game damage here as Shelby almost finds himself in a silly spot. But Ward's going down here by the Chiefs. They want to make sure they set up nice and early for this Dragon. Yeah, and even better yet, they're setting up for the turret because right now, Kensti cannot take the short way across through the jungle. He'll get caught out, and they might even be able to pick this up. Yeah, Ejim going to go in, finds a binding onto Warble. No follow-up, though, as Ejim forced to Black Shield himself. Good damage on the turret. It means the Chiefs get quite a lot out of that. We're going to have to find a little bit more as Spooks walks out of the jungle. You know, they got three quarters of the health of that turret just by great warding. And this is why I harp on it so much when the Chiefs play. They've got the two pink wards behind the pit, making sure they can't get flanked, keeping themselves nice and safe. They've got the four wards throughout the jungle, facilitates the blue buff steal. And until the Chiefs really are challenged on a warding level, because they take so many of yours away, and there's lived the full duration. It's like they have this inherent gold advantage right now, where even though they're not up a huge amount, they just don't have to spend the same amount of golds on wards. No, and we talked about it a bit uh, earlier in the week, actually, about the Chiefs' vision. It's very dynamic in how they set it up. That's the really cool part. Yeah, they move it with what objective they want to take next. So you can see right now, Dragon going to be up relatively shortly, about two minutes away. Bottom turret was up as uh, the next of drag uh, objective. So that's where all the vision is, bottom side of the map. Right now, top is an isolated 1v1. They don't need the vision control there. No, but I mean, got waste pushing as well to help them, the Chiefs. Very good at setting that sort of thing up, although probably looking to fight in the next few seconds. Swiffer, need to see Lard Rod completed with the Sorcerers and the Marilla Nomicon. Radio has the Runa's Hurricane ready to go, and Swiper's had a Zonis for quite a number of minutes already. So the Chiefs are quite strong, and that third Dragon is up in a minute 30. Yeah, it certainly is, and right now, AV are resting their hat on the fact that Porky is actually stronger than Swiper for the first time in the game, and he is relentlessly shoving. Swiper continuing to answer the push because his teleport is available, so he's not really concerned right now. But unless they can get something out of the Trinity Force Aurelia Power Spike, you feel that the Chiefs will run over the top of this one. Yeah, blue buff coming through it over for Swiffer. Very nicely timed to make sure they don't try and take it on the blue side when the dragon's up. We see that one a lot. Yeah, we certainly do, and that's how teams generally get their first dragon back in the game, because the overlap does come through eventually. But Chiefs, we've kept harping on about the wards. They're still available, and now they're moving in with 50 seconds left to secure the dragon. Yeah, I'm not trying to get some vision, but can't quite find enough of the Chiefs. Still shoving most of these waves out again, and Radir almost stalking some prey here in the bottom side. He's alone right now. Yeah, but the rest of the members on the left-hand side, you see them being pinged out. 30 seconds until Dragon, we have some recalls coming through, and this is going to be probably the first major 5v5 yeah, we see. Porky's teleport's going to be very close to being back up. I think he'll just make it in time, but the Chiefs, I like this transition a lot, just pressuring the mid lane turret. Yeah, with the blood foil on Swift, it actually does some <laughs> meaningful damage there. Kensti will be able to clear it out, but they'll get it anyway. Yeah, tower's dead to the blood Victor. Don't think I'd be saying that one today, but 
This is the world we live in right now, and Dragon up in six seconds. Porky's TP will just be back off. But Swipe is ready to go as well. Yeah, he certainly is. And with the Zonia's Hourglass, Sork Boots as well as Haunting Guys, team fight wise, Swipe is at a huge advantage. So once again, looks like the avant garde are going to seed it. Yeah, they're going to come in to maybe look for a fight, but the uh, Dragon itself is dead to a Callista Ren there. Joby actually may be caught out here. No one's going to die by the looks of things, Chiefs. Managed to retreat safely and still keep their mid No, they do lose the turret in mid. Yeah, so in the end, Kensi was able to push in, get that one in their favor. Right now, it really is the bottom lane that's hurting Avant Guards. 50 CS. Radius has been on an absolute tear this split. You understand why they've been prioritizing things like the Lulu coming through here. Swiffer doing a good job on the Victor, but Radius, honestly, when you match him with an aggressive support like Egypt, just is unlocked. Uh, he is, and he's certainly had not the split we were expecting, I think, last split. Not a bad split, but just not an incredible split, which is what this one has been. Swoof has actually recently talked a lot as well about playing safer just because of sort of metagame things, but also just because of radio things. When this man, if you put faith in his ability to carry you again, he just doesn't feel the same need to carry. So he just kind of hangs out, farms and does his job. Yeah, exactly right. So you see that a little bit more jungle pressure came through from Shelby in the middle lane this time around. Kensty's done a great job, honestly, against Swiffer. Being able to perform very well and... Raid it. Pretty much didn't have a great last season either. Like, I'm trying to think back to when he really was blowing me away as a AD carry and hasn't really had that same impact. But this season, definitely, we keep mentioning his kills, how well he's been playing. Up there is uh, probably, once again, Premier AD yeah, carry. Yeah, really good player. I mean, one of the best players in the region for a long time, but finally, I think, proving himself again in professional play in the OPL. We do have a slight pause here. Shouldn't be too much longer before we get the one result. But I like that you mentioned, you know, when was the last time Raid here was really this fearsome player that everyone was afraid to play that was head and shoulders the best player in Oceania. Funnily enough, it was not the last time he was playing Callista. He used to be awful at that championship. Yeah, he certainly did. You know, it was one of my better facts. Of, uh, he put so many... Out, like, Callista was a time sink champion for Radio. We talk about it all the time. Sometimes you pick up a champion, feels natural, you jump on the rift and you're like, oh my god, that was not the champion. Different auto attack animation, weird builds coming out. People actually thought Callista was inherently weak when she was first released. And I guess the Bloodthirst from Runan's build was unlocked. From there, he really started making the champion his own and couple it with an aggressive support. It just fits Ejim so well. You can pluck him out of danger when he's going over aggressive. You can initiate with him all of a sudden, even on champions like Morgana. I just really like the fit. Yeah, I do as well. It is important to mention Callista as an enabler of your support player because Fate's Call is so much of your ultimate and it relies completely on somebody else. Yeah, exactly right. You know what? I really like how two-pronged Fate Call is because you can allow someone like an Alistair to fly in there, get the initiation going, then pluck him up, wait for his cooldowns to come back and then throw him back into the fight. Or it can be like your get-out-of-jail-free card where you're like, I want a ward over that edge and I'm not sure if I am going to face check. You get the ward, five people jump out at you and your Callista just goes, well, you're safe now. You're with me, friend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Callista Ultimate, just, it's, it just says no, I feel like. Whenever you try and kill someone, you get all the CC in the world. You get a Vi Nautilus... Yeah. Ultimate rush in there. It's not happening. It's not happening. See ya. Just denies it as well. Just cuts it in half. Yep. You can't follow him here. He's safe now. <laughs> He's safe now. So we have seen... I, I, I agree. I think the evolution of Callista and how people started first playing aggressive supports and realized you could also play disengage just means that Callista's always going to be good. Yeah, exactly right. Like One of the better moments was when we first saw the Leapfrog throw the Thresh away from you. He drops the Lantern. You take it as well. Two gap closes get you right out of trouble there. I think that just the evolution of Callista is something that I'm still not sure we've seen the last form because we've seen like things like Blitzcrank Callista where you rocket jump, grab people, yep. and then they fly across half the screen. Like There is just so many things that it can be yep. utilized. And with. for me, the fact that Callista survived in a metagame with so many big tanks with the Cinderhawk is a testament to that champion's power. Yeah, it certainly is because the thing about Callista is also performs really well with Control Mage because Control Mage do consistent damage, and that's what Callista's about, getting the spears in and then able to pull the Execute trigger whenever she wants. So you cu couple her with things like Victor, Azir, Cassie, Ethiopia still does a really good job of shrugging through them. Ooh, Raider could be in trouble, actually. Can't fans call himself, but hops away to safety. Yeah, Egypt able to nail the bind. Spooks now. Oh, Destiny finds Radiant. Black Shield wears off. Radiant's forced to flash. Egypt goes in aggressive, though. Fates calls down. They'll pop it. Good three-man stun lance. He's going to throw himself back away from trouble. But Swift is diving in. He takes out Warble and the Chiefs. Going ham in this big team fight. Destiny's dead. Victor gets the double. Radiant's going to chase him for Kensty. Spears going into the back. Lulu going to... 
live just. Yeah, and Aurelia still on the back line hasn't done anything. Uh oh, Bucky. Looking for a flank, doesn't really have any abilities left though, so they're going to be a bit tricky in the Chiefs. Break the base of the advantage, stride back into the game. 5,000 gold ahead, base in Tatters and the Chiefs. One team fight and all of a sudden, this is what happens. Yeah, and you know, it just once again goes to their vision control. Able to get through the jungle uncontested, knew that they weren't going to be caught out. That's the only ward that AV really had in the area. They take the tier two, they take a winning team fight, then they take the base. And I'm so glad Swiffer just demonstrated the true power of Victor because he flashed a wall and insta gived two people. There was two people that he hit his whole combo on and they were no longer able to fight. And AV, they call the desperate desperation button, start pinging out Baron. Yep, Baron. Porky's there is like, oh, I kind of want to start it. What was like, I'm not there yet. Please don't do this. Spooks is like, yeah, guys, I know you're there. Oh, maybe caught. Shelby, knock up. Swiffer coming through. Great gravity field. God, the damage is high. But actually, ulti channel there by Spooks. It's going to keep him out of trouble. Yeah, so in the end, Swiffer, as well as Radio, relatively low. It's only really Shelby that got chunked. He still has ultimate to go back to a tunnel. So you feel maybe AV have a window. Well, here it's a binding. Destiny looking aggressive as well, but doesn't have his ultimate. Minions crashing into the top side means Avant do have a reprieve here around the Baron area. But Avant is starting to fall further and further behind. And the scaling we talked about, they're not going to find it now, they think. They have to press the, some sort of desperation and it might be Baron. Yeah, it 100% is Baron. They're just not doing it because of how well the Chiefs team fight. And now the bottom minion wave way too big. They actually might have to recall and give it up in response. Yeah, window missed here by the looks of things. Egypt, if he lands a bind, might get a kill. Destiny with his ulti. Shelby, Shelby tunnels, tunnels away, so they'll be safe. But instead, the Chiefs will just take the Baron. Yeah, and it's funny. It's actually Shelby that needs to recall right now because the Chiefs, they've got control over the area. Shelby's the one with the global ultimate to be able to impact it, but they've started it up. Yeah, we've talked about this quite a bit, I think, for this combo. It is so hard to take a buff once Kalista Nunu starts an objective. Yeah, exactly right. You know, Destiny running in there. They can peel off whenever they want. They're going to stay on. They're just going to take the Baron. That's actually a bit too aggressive. Destiny, though, goes down there. Equalizer are trying to cut them off. They're trying to kill Randy. They're actually taking Baron is low. Rek'Sai gets it. Avant maybe done it here, but Swiffer, too much damage in the pit. Warble arrives late, although the damage is good. Rockets come through. Warble going to look in the Chiefs. Swiffer goes back in, but that's not enough. Warble going to go in, goes nuts, gets a triple. Avant turned it around. Yeah, Avant able to get the one team fight. And we talk about Porky and Shelby a lot. Destiny flew in there, looked like he went too early. But the two divers get on top of Radir, who was positioned in the back of the pit, make his life hell. They come up with a five for two, three in the end. Look, they fly in there. They get on top of the AD carry. He's the one doing all the damage. And just delete him. Porky in the end does a lot of damage AOE. Warble just picking people off with the rockets. Smartly moves away from that ultimate coming through from Swiffer. And then with Kensi getting excited, Warble just honestly took over the fight. Yeah, he did. I mean, the Lulu there in his pocket means that Avant just did so much work. And we've seen it from the Chiefs a couple of times, especially against their friends Legacy, who they've lost to a surprising amount of times. Getting out scale is one of the things that sometimes hurts them, and that finishing that Baron, they'll look back and be like, yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah, they just, they thought that they could peel off a lot earlier than they could, but Destiny came from the weak side of the map and got in before they could turn around and respond. It was just a complete call that should never have gone but through. But Destiny died, like, instantly. Yeah, he even used his ultimate. Didn't he what? ulted late. Destiny finds Radio again. Hey, butts him back in. Spooks. Fourth to channel is ulti. Chelwu diving in. Kensi going to get the kill. All of a sudden, Avant unlocked here is a good gravity field. Going to zone the rest of Avant away. Swiper already used his ultimate. Destiny re-engages. And Warble's going nuts. There's another kill onto Swiffer this time. Yeah, this time they will secure the dragon for themselves as well. You see how tanky Porky is. Just because of all the magic damage coming through. Rumble, Victor, as well as Nunu. All magic damage here. Only really Radiant that can deal with him. Hasn't gone the crit build. Hasn't even gone the AoE build. Has double lifesteal and has been made pay. Yeah, and you, it doesn't matter if you have double lifesteal if you don't get to auto attack. The diving's just too much here. Even Kensti can add his ultimate. I don't even think he's been involved. He does do quite a lot of damage, yeah, by the way. Yeah, he certainly does. And you know, he's gone the build that keeps himself alive because Warble is the shining light of this composition. Kensti, as long as he shields Winsies, then can go into the stasis, come back out, shield Winsy again. 
Warble's going to clean up. Yeah, and he has been here. You can see not even at three items yet is Warble, and he's already doing enough damage here. I mean, Kenshi's helping out a reasonable amount here with picks, but he's again got more of a utility build for himself to make sure he can shield up Warble. And all of a sudden, the Chiefs find themselves with an even-looking gold lead, and that first dragon for Avant means so much. Yeah, it certainly does. It stops the snowball coming through the fifth dragon. We talked about how well they fight over objective. Nunu, Callista, they've got Rumble. They're even starting to get on top of that vision control that the Chiefs pride themselves of keeping out there. Swift is still in a very good position. Raid is still ridiculously strong. But I honestly think if he has his times again, he goes Runan's Hurricane. Radio? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's got Hurricane. Oh, he's got... Wow, he's got three items. Yeah. He actually has three items. I have no idea how he died that last fight then. He's got so much lifesteal and self-peel. He got killed. If Pocky Chelby just dove him and Kenshi yeah. got in there, like... Destiny is just, yeah, making his life yeah. The miserable. The, 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 yeah, the front line's way too strong here for Avant. And you can see we talked about Avant's draft being the thing that they can really sort of lean on here in this game. It kind of took a mistake from the Chiefs with that Baron, but that was a hard call to make there for the Chiefs, given how good their Baron taking ability was. And look, they're still not out of the game yet. They're still pressing forward. Yeah, 100%. You know, the issue now is that they're going to get outscaled eventually. No one can really deal with the split push coming through from Aurelio already. They have the uh, Hyper Carry and Jinx coupled up with a very good peeling support in Destiny, who can also engage and Kenst his Lulu. So, 100% agree with you. Game not over. Chiefs still arguably ahead, but it's just going to get worse as it, the time goes on. It is. Porky's being a nuisance. Waves pushing in the bottom side. The Chiefs struggling to get on top of this tower. Forced a Black Shield right here just for a couple of pot shots, but the Chiefs already are backing off the tier yeah, 2. Yeah, you can see they just don't want to be engaged upon. Top lane will be a huge wave that Porky can go absorb for even more damage. And Pressure on Egypt. We credit him for being an aggressive support, getting in people's faces, being able to make plays. Right now, his Black Shield is the ability that will win or lose in the game because Destiny shouldn't be able to break it. Really, only Kensity is the person that can. So he should be able to stop all of Chelby's, all of Destiny's, and arguably Porky's CC's from locking down that Callista player. And we've seen it. He has to because Chelby and Porky just by themselves are enough of a pain for Radia that he doesn't really live through it. And Right now, we're sort of resetting a little bit. Baron's up in a minute 45. It's worn off, of course, from Avant as a result. No dragon to speak of right now. And maybe Chiefs think about that bottom lane. It is still open, but I think the reason they're not going down there is because they don't want a team fight. Yeah, no, they don't want a 5v5 right now. I think that they have to wait for Void Staff to come through, definitely, because that's when Porky starts taking meaningful damage. You saw last fight, able to just run through what Swiffer was throwing at him. In the end, even had to ulti the front line, which you just don't want to have to do with Victor. So Swiffer waiting on that voice staff to come through. Just got it. Now they can fight again. Well, good news there for the Chiefs because they do need to look to fight in about a minute's time. Baron will be back up here in the Chiefs. Maybe a little more careful around the objective this time. Yeah, definitely agree. You can see once again, they've just gone back to their brand of League of Legends. Vision control over the bottom side of the map has been completely swept out for Avant. They've got top side control, but the inhibitor, probably more of an objective right now. No, oh, the ping on some pork is That'd be a great kill if they can get it. Radio does look to have enough damage to try they and take him out. They pop the ulti. Porky's forced to flash already. Egym just wants a binding lantern. The passive's going to be good, but Radio locks on. Porky's going to go through. Rexai's coming down. He dives back in, but Radio gets the kill. Mistake there from Porky. The Chelby diving back in, but the bind lands again. Rest of the team's here. Good block of the ulti there by Egym. Spook's coming in with some snowballs. Great off by Swiper to zone them off. And that's going to be two precious kills. Yeah, and they will be able to push through. Grab the inhibitor again. Boy, Egypt took some damage, but Destiny has to burn off. Yeah, he does use it there, but they are going to get the inhibitor. Baron opens up now for them again. And a crucial overextension by Porky. Yeah, he just wanted bottom turret. You know, he thought that they were going to go towards the Baron call, but historically, Chiefs have always valued inhibitor and match, map pressure over setting up around those objectives. Probably should have seen that one coming, and they've caught out Kensi. Kensi really going to get caught here as well, finding no just misses. Would have taken a while to kill the Lulu through the Zonnies and the ulti, for the Chiefs instead going to take a turret. Yeah, so they're looking to push in for this one. Spook's just tanking it. Destiny and Kensi landing something crafty up, but no ulti there for Destiny makes that too tricky. They can't actually take the Baron though with Chiefs. They didn't run towards it after those kills. Yeah, so not willing to risk it because they have the teleport still available on Porky. He can get in there and start mixing it up. 
They do get the Scuttle Crab, which is a big deal because now they have vision permanently over the area. And right now, the problem with Avance lineup is they just can't take turrets. It's six to two. That is the gold lead. Yeah, absolutely here. But Avant, they'll start the Baron. This is aggressive. Wobble gets there in time. Spooks is in the area, though. I don't know about this. Yeah, no, they have to back away. And they do. They actually might peel off for a kill. Porking and a TP in. Spooks fairly tanky, though. Swiper putting pot shots in with the poke. Yeah, and you don't want to disengage after that teleport because you only get one shot at all of a sudden. Bottom wave pushing up. Forky going to have to probably go back and secure that one, and it's going to mean more objectives to the Chiefs. Yeah, Dragon's up as well. Avant don't really want to go. Oh, never mind. Right? He's already there. Yeah, he's just throwing spears into it. Yeah, that'll be a Dragon. He's got Last Whisper now as well, so able to tear through the massive armor that Shelby and Porky have built up. The Chiefs might get outscaled, but if they need to fight, they're at a very good spot to do so right now. Yeah, and they don't get outscaled until, like, very late in the game where Warble's able to get to an equal footing as Radier, because right now, full item ahead still is Radier. Their objective control hasn't gone anywhere. They're going to start it up again. Yeah, but we saw what happened last time. Chiefs going to have to be a bit careful. Destiny again from the weak they're side. look to pull off maybe. Yeah, Destiny comes back in. The Baron does go to the Chiefs. Destiny can't do enough work. Spook channels his ulti. Swift for darting around, puts down the gravity field, and Shelby gets melted this time. Porky dives in, but Idrim's going to throw himself back, and they really want Kalista. They will get it, but at what cost here? Porky's dead, and that's the ace. Yeah, that looked like Season 2 OPL uh, League of Legends in Oceania right there. Just kill Radiant. Don't care what else happens, and it will be the Chiefs come through with the Baron in the win. And very nice cutting from Radiant. Keeps alive long enough, shreds through Shelby, able to make sure his team can clean up the fight. The Chiefs get the ace, swipe a TP to the bottom side, and this will be game. Yeah, exactly right. Chiefs moving in, still 15 seconds on anyone being available. Avant made them work for it, but in the end, the Chiefs come up trumps. Yeah, and the Blood Boil Victor once again may be <laughs> what takes out the Nexus. Swift are going to look to face check, and the Chiefs stay undefeated, but that was close. Yeah, it certainly was, and... Coming down to the Y, you know, Avant threw a lot at them there. Destiny kept coming from the weak side. Massive headbutt, pulverized. Very good gravity field there. Made sure that Porky couldn't join that dive. Yeah, and I mean, we saw just in that last little fight, the zone control between the Rumble, uh, Victor was awesome to watch. Yeah, exactly right. Especially with Nunu standing on top of it. You've got the fact that the gravity field stops people in their tracks. That was really close, honestly, going in Avant's favor. A couple of slip-ups, that bottom lane catch towards uh, Porky really sealed it. Yeah, really did there. And the Chiefs do keep themselves undefeated, but we'll have to see for how much longer after that. And with that, we're going to pop back outside to Atlas and Spawn. Nope. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. I'm here with my friend Rusty here. Of course, Spawn's in there with you, Pastry Time, silly boy. But... Of course, that was a phenomenal, phenomenal game. And of course, the first time that the Chiefs have actually looked mortal. Yeah, as the other Rusty just said, it came down to the wire. It was a very close game. The Baron steals the kills everywhere. It was all happening, but the Chiefs managing to pull out the win in the end. Yeah, the Chiefs definitely playing fantastically. Of course, there are a few sort of interesting moments there where things didn't quite go right. We're looking at that Baron, the phenomenal steal from Shelby, and then Warble's clean-up crew effort, of course, just being the janitor at the end of that fight. But in the end, it was just the Chiefs sort of knowing that they can definitely take the win, playing calmly and consistently towards the late game. And look, they managed to call that Baron so incredibly perfectly, burnt it all the way down, and then took the fight. Yeah, that's right. Look, and then the Chiefs came out ridiculously strong, as they always do. It comes down, there's these close moments where it looks like it's going to come back, but the Chiefs pull it back and end up with the win. 10-0 now in terms of OPL. And if you want to see that game, you want to see any of the other games from tonight, some stats or VODs of any other week, make sure you go to our website, oce.lolesports.com. Yeah, but that is going to bring us to the end of week five, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. I'm, of course, Atlas. Thanks to Rusty here. Spawn and Pastry Time there, of course, on the Casa Desk and our whole production crew. Massive shout out to Swiffer as well for coming down and lending us a hand with some analysis. But with that, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week.